Ah, g'day guys and girls, your old mate Daz here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Now today we've got a 2015 model Hyundai iX35 and this one has the uh, two litre common rail diesel. Um, now, my good mate Rob here has said to me that his engine light has come on and uh, the vehicle has gone into limp mode. Uh, so let's go ahead now and uh, hook up the scan tool and see what's going on. Okay, so in the car here, uh, just down underneath here, is the uh, OBD scan port. There she is in a nice easy spot. So let's go ahead and uh, plug this up and uh, we'll have a look at what's, what's going on with her. Oh, that was easier said than done. Right, and the scan tool should now come alive using the vehicle's own uh, electric. So uh, we're just going to put the vehicle now, uh, turn on the accessories, uh, pressing this button here. And uh, right now, electric. we want all the lights to come up, but without starting the vehicle, which is in that position there. And of a scan tool, let's do a quick scan. Okay, so we've got coming up a um, OBD2 uh, scan code of a P2563, uh, one current and one pending code of the same code. So it's saying that the turbocharger boost control position sensor A uh, the circuit is uh, out of range or performance. Um, now, I've gone ahead and looked this up and um, uh, this is quite a common thing that goes wrong with this, uh, this particular engine. Um, now this is originally a Peugeot um, based engine and it comes out in different sizes, uh, 1.6, 1.7. There's a two litre and I know there's a 2.5 litre in this engine range. And uh, they all use the same uh, turbo boost pressure sensor, uh, which is called a MAP, an MAP, Mike Alpha Papa sensor, MAP sensor. And um, looking at the amount of these um, uh, sensors that sold on eBay, um, there's been hundreds, if not thousands, of these parts sold on eBay because they quite often go. So we're going to go ahead and uh, swap this part out and um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, reset the codes, uh, reset it, turn the engine light off and uh, hopefully that will be the end of it. Okay, so let's pull off the engine cover and take a look at this motor. Now this one here is actually the, the two litre version of the common rail diesel. And the culprit we're looking at today is right here on this front manifold here is this sensor right here see those two little I think they're a 10 mil bolt and on the front here is the electrical connector uh, that's the part that we're going to swap out now uh, it shouldn't be too hard it's just two bolts holding on the sensor and is it, I think there's four bolts holding on this top rail and it should be a quick swap out okay so what we've done is taken out this 10 mil bolt here and on the other end there's another 10 mil bolt down there and then we should be able to lift that up and out of the way so we can get to our sensor so now we're just going to undo those two uh, 10 mil there and uh, remove the map sensor So the actual culprit, the part that plays up is this uh, part here, uh, it's a four pin um, map sensor and uh, this little electrode here, um, for want of a better word, uh, detects the amount of pressure inside the um, 
uh, inside the uh, manifold uh, and measures the turbo pressure. Now the actual part here, the part number, is this top number here. You can also search online for that part number there. Now this is just a generic um, OEM manufactured uh, map sensor and um, the supplier that I got this from has sold hundreds and hundreds of them and in total it looks like there's been a few thousand of these sold so that's how common this part is to break down. Uh, now this particular one I got on eBay Australia for $26 Australian and it was delivered in about four or five days. Now we're just trying to maneuver that sensor up because um, here we go, there she comes. There is a, uh, uh, a rubber um, seal, circular seal on there, the green one as you can see. And uh, that's how it gets a nice snug airtight fit. Hey. Now having a look at that, have a look how choked up uh, yeah. with carbon um, that sensor is. So I'm not surprised at all, but that's giving faulty readings and triggering an engine light. Um, in fact, if that was cleaned, that would probably fix it, but we have a brand new one, so we'll just go ahead and install that. So, uh, to disconnect now that sensor, just press that lug in there, give that a bit of a tug here, Rob. Okay, and that should wiggle off. Great. And if you have a look down in there, it's got the same pins as our one. Okay, so what we're going to do with our new sensor here, we're just going to wet around that green rubber ring on there. Um, we don't want to lubricate it with oil or anything like that because it's going into an air chamber, an exhaust chamber. Um, so a little bit of spit or something like that just to wet it enough so that when we push it in, it actually goes in uh, tight and makes an airtight seal. Um, because... Um, uh, if we push it in dry, we're likely to uh, deform that rubber gasket and um, it could put a tear or a split in it and or it could get crushed and that won't give us our airtight seal that we need. So popping a little bit of spit around the green gasket there. That's all we need because it's only going to get used once just to slide it in so the green rubber doesn't get deformed. and. Uh, hook it up to the electrical connector so we don't drop it down inside the works anywhere Let's give it a good push in yeah. is that right on? yep that's gone in yep. and uh, just a matter of getting that back in sit it nice and snugly on top and then we've got to give it a good solid push and she'll just go in snug, hopefully. It'll take a little bit of effort to get it in because it took a bit of effort to get the old one out. Should make a bit of a pop. If it seems too hard to get it in, we can also put the bolts back in and uh, tighten it down that way. I think it's right down. Yeah, it's right down. Yeah. It is, yep. Okay, and it lines up with our screw holes. Yep, that's great. All right. So uh, now installation is just a reversal of the removal. We're just going to uh, put our put our electrical connector back on. We're putting our two 10 mil uh, bolts back in, and um, uh, I will then start the vehicle, run it for a couple of minutes, and then what we will do is just take. Um, take the vehicle back to the accessories light uh, using our scan tool and with the accessory lights on uh, we will reset the um, the uh, check engine light uh, and it may even go out on its own um, there is a chance of that uh, but if it doesn't we will turn it off and reset it and hopefully that will be the end of uh, that problem now what we've also done with this vehicle um, is we put in some diesel uh, fuel um, conditioner, a uh, diesel fuel injector cleaner, just to go through and give everything uh, a bit of a clean up inside. Um, so that's cleaning the fuel pump, uh, all of the, the uh, 
all the tubes, uh, the fuel lines, and it's also doing the fuel injectors, giving them a bit of a cr uh, clean, because they're under incredible pressure, the fuel injectors, and um, any gunk or carbon build up in, that, in there is gonna have a big effect. So um, putting in a bottle of fuel injector cleaner every few months should keep your vehicle clean on the inside as well, and uh, could save a lot of hassles in the future. Okay, so with the new map sensor installed, we've gone ahead and started the vehicle up. Uh, the check engine light has remained on and the vehicle is still in limp mode after about one to two minutes of running. Uh, so I've just gone ahead and cleared the code. Uh, there was only that one code. And uh, we're uh, now going to um, start the vehicle. Hopefully the check engine light will be out and hopefully the vehicle will come out of limp mode. Uh, we just tried revving uh, the engine and we couldn't get much more than about two and a half, three thousand revs maximum out of it. Uh, where the other day when I saw it, it was uh, you could easily just tap the accelerator and rev it round to five thousand revs. So it's definitely in a restricted mode, in limp mode, uh, all because of that one code from that map sensor. So uh, we'll start it up again now. Just put the engine cover back on and um, let's see if she. Uh, gets back to normal okay so good news the um, vehicle's been running now for about 20 minutes and the check engine light has not come back on and uh, the response is a lot better uh, now it's uh, coming out or even out of limp mode but it's going to take the vehicle some time now to learn all the settings again the, <coughs> the ECU uh, wasn't getting any signal from the uh, from the map sensor, so now it's got to relearn some of the settings uh, simply by using the throttle. And uh, I recommend taking it for a good burn down the motorway um, at uh, you know the maximum permissible speed you can do. Sit on that speed for 10-15 minutes, and that should get the ECU to uh, just to reset and relearn everything. Okay guys, well I hope that's helped you today, hope that uh, fixes your problem, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Okay, thank you. Bye.